is reaction pouring in after the president of Iran, Ebrahim Raisi, is confirmed dead in a helicopter crash along with his foreign minister and others. An interim president has been put in place. The country's state media reporting the helicopter is a Bell 212 that Iran purchased in the early 2000s. Now, he is known as the butcher of Tehran, but of course there are some of our adversaries and even a NATO member offering condolences. Turkey's president, Erdogan, calling him a valuable colleague and brother. India's prime minister, Modi, saying shocked that India stands with Iran in this time of sorrow. Vladimir Putin issuing this statement, saying he's an outstanding politician. Saudi Arabia, of course, in the middle of uh, this as well, says there are condolences on the death of His Excellency. Let's bring in our panel to discuss what happens next and also a new development today on the uh, situation with the ICC. Prosecutor trying to bring charges against Israel and Hamas. So pleased to bring in right now uh, the deputy director of the Washington office of the National Council of Resistance in Iran, Ali Reza Jarafazadeh, also director of government relations of the Zionist organization here in America, Dan Polak. A gentleman, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to have you. So, Raisi's death, he, the big question is, what happens now? Obviously, you know, he was elected in 2021, Ali, but he was talked about taking over for the supreme leader, who is older. We know he's about 85. So who's the successor? Is it going to be now his son? Um, and does this maybe pose any type of turmoil now for the future of Iran? Of course, Raisi, hardliner. Uh, the butcher, uh, you know, uh, what do you see kind of is the next sort of significant moment here for Iran, which, you know, in the past few months, obviously, has been trying to, uh, you know, in, bring all its proxies to complete more atrocities since October the 7th? Well, first of all, um, I think the biggest uh, trouble that the regime is facing right now, and they're trying to con contain it, is actually the view of the people of Iran. Because as far as Iranian people are concerned, they see Ibrahim Raisi as a mass murderer because he was involved in the massacre of some 30,000 political prisoners in the summer of uh, 1988, uh, based on a fatwa, a religious decree issued by then Supreme Leader Khomeini, that condemned to death anyone um, who was in any way associated with and remained loyal to the main Iranian opposition movement known as the MEK, sentenced them to death. And Raisi, was one of the four members of the Death Commission overseeing the carrying out of those uh, executions. Uh, so, uh, and he boasted about it. He said he's, you know, he's very proud of carrying out these killings. Yeah. And that explains why, uh, during the uh, presidential elections that led to a send of Raisi, it was, it was largely boycotted by the Iranian people. So, uh, as far as the people are concerned, they're very happy about the situation. As far as the regime is concerned, they are facing a major crisis because Raisi was a close and loyal ally of uh, Khamenei. This is a strategic blow to the regime that will and create me, consequences and crisis. And let me, uh, Dan, react here. Uh, this is maybe an opportunity then for Israel as well, if there's going to be some instability here with this uh, chopper crash here and uh, you know, maybe a turning point. Well, the bad news here is that everyone who might be in line for a position in the Iranian mullahocracy, if that's the word, is, uh, is pretty bad news. So he himself is a butcher, as, as was just explained. Everyone around him is in the same clique. Uh, the real popular will of the people of Iran is not expressed through any of these people. So Israel is waiting and seeing. It's unclear. Uh, Iran is, of course, the real threat to Israel and to the United States in every aspect, both with the Houthis, with Hezbollah, with Hamas, and with the Iraqi militias. So all of that is a potential opportunity if there's a loosening of the reins from Tehran. But unfortunately, the likely result is more of the same in the short term. The real solution to the entire problem with Iran is a replacement of the Islamic State with a government that would actually be of the people. And that's very difficult to achieve. It is. In fact, uh, the Supreme Leader, uh, he and only one other person have ever held this role, uh, as you know, uh, Ali Reza. So here we are uh, with, you know, what's happening around the globe, what's happening in Israel. Uh, please share your thoughts on, on some of the thoughtful comments that Dan just said, that this is, this is uh, going to be, a, you know, a continued effort of people who chant death to Israel and death to America, no matter Raisi's there or not, or whoever is the next Supreme Leader. 
Well, I think um, the, the one thing that can never be overlooked is the uh, state of the society inside the country. Uh, you know, the main mission of uh, Raisi was to prevent the uprisings in Iran. And, you know, because of his background, because he relies heavily on the Revolutionary Guards and, and the history of uh, being a mass murderer, yet the biggest uprising uh, in Iran in September 2022 that spread to over 200 cities happened right under the watch of Raisi only one year after he took office. Yes. So the, the one thing that the regime has no solution for it is the people of Iran. There is a four decades of desire of the Iranian people to bring about change. And, you know, the, if the whole purpose of the 1988 massacre was to mm. kill any voices of dissent forever, that badly failed. It's now the next generation, the children and the grandchildren of those who were massacred yes. in 1988 by the regime, who are now in the streets uh, calling for change in Iran. And we've seen the oppressed women who have been so uh, brave to speak up since Masha Amini, obviously, uh, chanting in the streets now after uh, Raisi's confirmed death. In a last question here, and I'll pose this to you, Dan, that we do have this story developing about the ICC uh, putting out a prosecutor saying they want to charge, you know, Netanyahu and Hamas. Um, obviously illegitimate, but, you know, the response from the Biden administration has been somewhat weak. And, and what do you feel needs to happen next when you see these moves happening? And obviously some in the press picking up on it, some of our adversaries using this as well as fodder. Right. The uh, ICC, the United States, nor Israel is a signatory to the treaty that implements it. The supposed reason they can bring charges is due to the totally fictitious idea that there is a state of Palestine. There is not. So the state of Palestine is actually guilty, if it existed, of war crimes and should have charges brought against them. But the leadership of Israel, both the defense minister and the prime minister, it is absurd to put them in the same category. It is outrageous. What can the United States do? The president can take action uh, mm -hmm. preventing the staff of the ICC from even entering the United States. There's a congressional bill to impose sanctions on them yes. for that exact reason. And they ought to be concerned about it. But unfortunately, under President Biden, it probably will take congressional action to make something happen that uh, would truly have an effect. And unfortunately, it does look like it will be that way. Dan, I appreciate you joining me in studio. Ali Reza, thank you for your thoughtful comments on where we see Iran's uh, stability or instability now uh, and the rest of the world is watching. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with much more after this.